We are crawling along to the next review, and it is the LTR 1220 Crawler Crane by Liebherr. There's a nice picture of the crane on the Liebherr branded box, and if we switch it around to the other side, we see that this is a Conrad model number 2746. The box feels heavy, so let's get it onto the weigh bridge, and it's about six pounds seven ounces, or 2.9 kilograms. The box style is a sleeve which encloses a couple of expanded polystyrene trays and is also a set of instructions we'll look at in a moment. With the lid off you can see the many parts. The instruction sheet is quite comprehensive and it starts with a parts list and it goes on to describe the fixing of the crawler tracks. And then there are other things such as the fly jib and how the boom telescopes. And if we go to the back page, some of the other features are also described. Here are the parts out of the box, including some small bags. It's interesting to see that the model comes with two sets of self-assembly jacks, a longer set and a shorter set. Each one is individually numbered and it would fit onto an outrigger. And they are also individually numbered. Four plastic pads are included and these just clip on to the bottom of the pistons. And here you can see we've attached one of the longer sets of jacks with a couple of steel pins. Next we're into cosmetics with a mirror on the crane cab. And there's another mirror which fits onto the opposite side of the body. There's an optional second winch which can be fitted. And we always like to go large so we'll fit it and that's easily done with steel pins. There's four to insert and they hold it securely enough. Next we'll take some rope off the winch drum for the main hook block. And here we see it reeved up. There's no specific tying off point for the rope, but there is a safety chain. The fly jib sits on brackets which fit to the side of the boom. And there's one to fit, and it's slightly on the loose side. The fly jib can then be carefully hung in the right position on the side of the boom. With that done, we have the crane ready for transport. And because we've got a heavy trailer, we can also carry the track ballast blocks. Crawler tracks have metal pads, and the track frames also have optional points for fitting the access stairs, and you can see the non-functional rollers. Up on top there are plastic brackets which hold the mesh walkways. The track ballast blocks are metal parts with nice graphics, and the metal stairs look a little bit heavy. In this view you can see that the pads for the self-assembly jacks are slightly off-colour. The detailing of the cab is to a high standard with lots of small graphics. And there are metal grab rails and also signal lights on top of the cab. There's also a large front wiper. The many small warning graphics continue through onto the crane body. And there are also graphics on the counterweights and usable lifting lugs. The hoist ropes are decent quality. There's more interesting detailing at the front, including a plastic exhaust system. The main boom ram has a plastic jacket with an excellent colour match. And the free sheave metal hook block is nice enough. Detailing on the boom includes a slightly off colour spooling drum. And there are separate metal sheaves in the boom head. Each telescopic section has locking points at approximately 50%, 90% and 100%. And the lattice part of the fly jib is made of metal. With just the offset ratchet and rope guide being plastic. The solid section is also plastic with an excellent colour match, and you can hang a leap hair flag on the single line hook. The crane has arrived on site so we can replicate the unloading procedure, and the real crane can swing out its assembly jacks. These can then be lowered to lift the crane up slightly from the truck, and to facilitate that here we need to put the pads onto some small blocks. 
The Hordish truck can then drive away, leaving the crane standing on its own four legs. Let's take a look at the crawler track frames. And the tracks roll reasonably well, but there's no working rollers on these frames. As usual, the tracks are tensioned by spring-loaded idlers. And a nice touch on the model is that a lifting tool is included to be able to lift the track frames. And that enables the crane to easily lift its own tracks. Here's how it looks with the crane attaching its own tracks. But you might need to fiddle with it a bit to get the track frame to balance evenly. Also, the crane has extended its track frames. And with that, the track frame can be attached. You fix the connection using steel pins, and that's a bit fiddly to do. It's not a job that can just be done using fat fingers. A neat little aspect is that the mesh floors then slide forwards, and little tabs at the front end just hook over to form a connection. And this functionality works well. Now we need to load up some ballast, and it starts with the blocks on the track frames, and they are a hook over connection. Then we have some access stairs and they can be fitted to the track frames or to the ballast blocks as shown here. And then we get onto the main counterweight which is made of a number of separate pieces. This then gets offered up to two connection points on the back of the crane. And when it's in position it slides slightly to one side to lock it in place. So with the model fully configured let's see how much it weighs. And it's a solid five pounds, 12 ounces, or 2.6 kilograms. To lock the angle of the main boom, Conrad has this clamping system at the top of the ram jacket. And a tool is provided to rotate the collar, which then clamps the piston. It's okay, you just need to make sure it's clamped tight enough and doesn't slip down. Extending the telescopic sections is easy enough. And here we're pulling out a few sections until the point that the first locking clip engages on each section. As usual, it's best to have a weight on the hook when you're doing this. The crane cap does feature a tilting mechanism, but it's not the best because it doesn't want to stay tilted. What does work fine though is the pull-out platform under the cab. Rotating the crane is fine when you get past some initial stickiness. To go for the maximum reach, we can configure the fly jib and we can fold it out and then lock it using a steel pin. The pin inserts easily and there's also a pull out rope guide at the bottom end. You attach the fly jib to the boom head using four separate steel pins and on the review model it was best to clean out some excess paint on the eyelets in order to make fitting the pins easier. Here you can see the pins in place, and if you want the jib to be angled, you can adjust the ratchet connection. And here we're setting it to the maximum angle of about 40 degrees, or if you don't want so much, you can have about 20 degrees. So fully extended, this is quite a large model, so let's do a dim check. And to the main boom, it's about 4 feet or 122 centimetres. Or to the fly jib, it's about 64 inches or 163 centimetres. As usual, this is a robust and well-made model by Conrad. It has some welcome finer detailing in terms of small graphics, but its strongest point is its overall functionality. It can be posed in many different ways, including during self-assembly, so overall, it's a very flexible model, which is excellent. <laughs>